Hello and welcome back. In this chapter, chapter 8 of Klein Organic Chemistry, we'll be discussing addition reactions of alkenes. Chapter 8 in the third edition is chapter 9 in the first and second editions of this book. So if you're using an older edition, please be aware that those chapter numbers are different. So we're going to be looking in detail at all of these addition reactions shown here. We're going to be uh, considering how addition reactions occur and why they occur and looking at the mechanisms for all of them. So addition is the opposite of elimination as we see here. Elimination is, you'll remember, creating a double bond. Okay, And addition is adding something across that double bond. So we're adding something to one side and something else or maybe even the same thing to the other side. So here you can see that we're adding X and Y across a double bond. So all of these are addition reactions. So we've got in the first case addition of H and X or a halo acid across the double bond for hydrohalogenation. In the next reaction we've got H and OH which is hydration. In the next we've got H and H which is hydrogenation. That probably sounds a little bit familiar to you. Then we've got X and X which is halogenation. OH and X which is halohydrin formation and then OH and OH which is dihydroxylation. So we're going to look at um, different um, different types for some of these reactions and we're going to look at all these reactions in detail. So again we're converting this carbon carbon pi bond is converted to two new sigma bonds. So we're taking this pi bond here and we're converting it to two new sigma bonds to add X and Y. Okay, so remember that the pi bond is an electron pair donor. It can act as a base by picking up a hydrogen. Okay, or it can act as a nucleophile by picking up an electrophile. Now we'll come back to all of that when we get back into reactions. And again, we're going to look at all of those reactions in detail. But let's just take a minute to discuss how alkenes are important in nature and in industry. So alkenes are found in natural products and they're also used in the production of industrial products. We have allicin here that's responsible for the odor of garlic, geraniol that's isolated from roses and used in perfumes, alpha farnesine that's, used, that's found in the waxy coating of apple skins, and then we have some natural polycyclic alkenes or just cyclic alkenes like limonene here on the left and cholesterol on the right. So cholesterol has a double bond. Limonene has a double bond. All of these have double bonds. That's why they're alkenes. Here's um, an example on the left here, the sex pheromone of the codling moth. And then we have an aphid alarm pheromone here. These have double bonds in them. And then at the bottom, a sex pheromone for a housefly. So all of these have double bonds in them. Now again, uh, alkenes are found in nature and industry. From petroleum, we can distill some small molecules and create ethylene or ethene. This, is, this molecule is also called ethene, okay? Or propylene, okay? Or propene, this molecule is also called propene. And alkenes are precursors for plastics generally and, and even some other compounds as we're going to see in this chapter in the chemical industry. So 70 billion, billion pounds of propylene is, and 200 billion, billion pounds of ethylene are made from cracking petroleum each year and a lot of those are used in the formation of plastics, polyethylene and polypropylene. So here we have some examples of how these are used. From petroleum we get ethylene and this is not actually made directly this way. It's made by halogenating ethene and then doing an elimination reaction. And We'll learn uh, halogenation in uh, a couple more chapters down. 
All right, and so we can make from ethylene, we can make ethanol. So not all the ethanol in your car is made from corn. A lot of it actually comes from petroleum. Uh, polyethylene, uh, acid aldehyde, which is precursor for some drugs and things. Ethylene chloride. From that we get vinyl chloride, and from that we get polyvinyl chloride, which is used for water pipes and stuff. Uh, from ethylene, we can also get ethylene oxide that is used in uh, for um, uh, different resins. And then ethylene glycol can come from that. So all of these are very important pre precursors from chemicals or ethylene glycol is used as an antifreeze. Oh, over here from propylene, we can get polypropylene, which is a plastic. Uh, cumene, which is... Uh, 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 also important and then we have propylene oxide which is used again for um, resins uh, isopropyl alcohol acetone all of these different and even uh, propylene glycol which is an antifreeze that's, that's less toxic so all of these are uh, important industrial chemicals that come generally from petroleum so addition and elimination reactions are the reverse of each other if we if we add something across a double bond so in this case we're adding h to one side of the double bond and x to the other side okay so we're gonna this is not a mechanism here but we're gonna form a bond from the h to this side and we're gonna form a bond from the x to this side right that's where they're going and through an addition reaction we can add those things across the double bond and through an elimination reaction we saw that we can remove H and X to give us a double bond. So those are reversible reactions. So what determines which way the, uh, which to which side this reaction will lie? Well, it turns out the temperature plays an important role in that. And if you'll remember, our delta G is equal to delta H plus a negative T delta S. Okay, and so <clears throat> what does that mean? It means that uh, this term, this entropy term, is very in, uh, temperature dependent. So if we increase the temperature, we're going to increase this entropy term. Well, how does that entropy term affect delta G? We're going to look at that. So, um, so if we consider an addition reaction, we're breaking the pi bond and the sigma bond here and we're forming these two sigma bonds and it turns out for th for this reaction uh we have a negative 19 kcals per mole for our delta h so if we consider bonds broken minus bonds formed we get negative 19 kcals per mole if we add all this up and that means our delta h is negative so remember delta g is dependent on delta h minus T delta S. So our delta H is negative, but what about our T delta S term? Is it going to be negative or positive? So if it is positive, then the negative T delta S term overall will be negative and our delta G will be negative. But let's look at what um, actually happens here. We've got two reactants and one product. So what does that mean? That means our delta S is negative. Okay, that means our delta S is negative, and therefore, if we consider delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S, our delta H is negative, but our T delta S term here is going to also be negative. Then when we multiply that by this negative out in front, that makes this T delta S term positive, and that means delta G is going to be in competition. Okay, with, with delta, there is a competition for delta G between delta H and the T delta S term. We can't change the fact that entropy is negative, okay, but what we can do is control the temperature. So if we keep our temperature low, then we can keep this T delta S term smaller than the delta H term, which means that our delta G will be negative. But if we keep the temperature high, then our T delta S term is going to be larger, and that's going to make our delta G positive, which will favor reactants. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that at low temperature, addition reactions will occur, 
and at high temperature elimination reactions will occur. So when we do an addition reaction, we want to do that at a lower temperature, maybe room temperature, or maybe even add ice, because if we heat it up too much, we will get the reverse reaction, which is an elimination, okay? All right, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next section where we'll start discussing reactions.